Hello, this is Kathleen McKee of Olene's.com Machine Embroidery Art. In this advanced digitizing tutorial, we're going to digitize a logo from start to finish. So this is going to be a long one, but we're going to get into a lot of details and hopefully you'll learn a lot of tricks. The first trick I want to show you is how we obtained this image. It was sent to me from a viewer and I put it in one of my uh, folders. So I go to my image tab and I'm going to go from file. But when I look for the image, no, that wasn't the image, and it was just called image, and I don't see it, although I know it was a JPEG. Now, I'm not a computer expert, although I am a software expert. I am not a computer expert, but a little trick I have figured out on how to get some of these JPEG images that won't open up in your folder is to just size this down, and I went into the folder where I had put it. Whoops, my small size. And you see I've got images, uh, th that's the one I want. That was the other one that showed up. It's, I see that this is a JPEG and a J, this is just a JPEG. I don't know if that makes a difference, but all I know is that I couldn't get it into uh, uh, as a template. So what I learned is just to drag it. And for some reason that works. I don't know why, but it does. Okay. Once I have it sized and positioned where I want, I want to analyze this and figure out how many colors there are and which ones I want to go first, second, third, and fourth. And I see there's four colors here. There's the white, the black, the blue, and what I call this uh, darker blue, I'm going to call it like a Prussian blue. Uh, also notice there's a little black outline here. You can see that better. And then there's this little thin white line here that separates the two blues. And then there's a uh, thicker uh, white outline around the buildings. I'm thinking I want to do the blue area first. And we'll do this with a plain region fill tool. And I'm not going to be real exact when I do this because we're going to use our uh, Remove Overlaps tool. So I'm just going to kind of just roughly fill this in. Now I'll be a little more detailed as I go around these areas because I don't think I'm going to do the Remove Overlaps there. Not worried about that's going to be covered with the white zigzag, so I'm not worried about that area. And when I get close to where we start it, I'm going to double click and that will fill in. We got our blue. Now with this next royal blue or Prussian blue, whatever color I'm going to call it section, it's not going to be as easy as that top because as you can see it breaks up in pieces. And if I do the remove overlaps and the machine is going to stop and trim every time there's a new section. So I'm going to do that with the manual punch tool. That way I can connect it to the running stitch and get through this a, a little faster. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to path this. And I can always change the uh, directions of the stitches later. And then I'm going to go to a feed, I mean, or a running stitch on my keyboard. That would be the letter V as in Victor. And then the keyboard, the letter Z as in Zebra. And I'll probably make this a fill stitch. Okay, then I'm V for. And I could still run through here because the black buildings are going to cover it. So we'll go Z. And go V, Z, Z. Z. 
D Z V Z and double click. Now as you can see uh, I did these stitches in a satin stitch without an outline and I'm okay with that but I would rather them be more in the direction or as the blue on the top so I am going to oh actually the color is not the same either so let's go to our sewing order and select the start of the uh, manual punches and with our hand on the shift key select the last that selects them all right mouse select objects we'll go to our color oh it's not let well now it is I don't know why so we're going to change that to no we'll change that to the Prussian blue now as you can see the stitches are all going uh, uh, vertically and that's okay but I want to change them to go more in the same direction as everything else so I'm going to select the edit and you see it has all these uh, direction lines I'm going to select that delete delete select this one delete and then I'm going to get this one and I'm going to change it this way and I'm also going to change this to a fill stitch and do the same thing with this. I'm going to delete one of them so by selecting it and pushing the delete key and then I'm going to change the directions here and change that to a fill stitch. This is not going to make such a difference. Select that, push the delete key, change the direction there. I'm going to do that with and I'm not going to worry about uh, Okay, select that, delete with on the keyboard, delete, select, delete, select, delete, select, delete, and we're going to change all those stitches to go horizontal. And I'll leave those as satin since that's a small area there. Same with here, we're going to select and uh, the key, push the delete key, select it, push the delete key and then we'll turn all those stitches horizontally. Come on. For some reason this doesn't want to do it. Here we go. Okay, let's try this. Hold on. A little bit at a time. I don't know. For some reason that's working. And I'll change that to a fill stitch. And so on. For some reason it doesn't want me to turn the direction of this I'm having problems with it so I'm just going to leave it like it is right now I could figure it out but I don't want to take up too much time in this video oh it looks like if I do them all slowly it lets me do it well I'll figure that out later uh, but in next one I want to do is the black so we're going to do that with the region fill tool and this one we do want to be exact because this is going to be the last major uh, uh, element and we're going to remove the overlaps of the blue underneath so we need to be a little more exact so as I trace around this and I think all of you all in the advanced class already know how to trace around so I will pause this and meet up with you so as you can see I have traced around here I'm going to double click to end this run the last color I used was that blue we want to make that black it's hard to see this now because of the black background let's lighten up that image just a little bit there we go that makes it okay so we can see what we're we are now going to remove the overlaps by selecting the black region first and with our finger on the control key select the blue area and then we are going to go to uh, modify overlap and we're going to remove the overlaps now they have been removed so so far we're doing pretty good we have three colors laid down and we only have uh, trims with 
I will not be able to complete all of the black parts like these, uh, it looks like a, a baseball stitch or something back here, I'm not sure what it is, uh, and these black outlines around the zigzag around because I have to lay the black on top of the white fill. So we will have to break up one color into two parts. So now we're going to do the white, and we want to do all of the white without having any jumps or trim. I'm going to start with that little thin uh, line that we saw that was dividing the horizon there. And I'll do that with just a plain uh, uh, running stitch. And we're going to do that in white. So we'll do that. And now I am going to. Uh, because this stitch, since everything is laid down, will show I need to bury it underneath the future zigzag st stitches. So I know there's going to be a zigzag outline around these buildings, so I will just cover it in there. So we're going to finish up our little thin white line there right here, and keep that in mind, remember that point because you're going to need to join it up with the zigzag that goes around uh, these buildings. For that outline, I'm just going to select the whole area, and I am going to um, put a zigzag stitch around them. Uh, we don't want a Prussian blue, we want that to be a white outline. And we don't want it to be the default too. We want it to be very thin. Maybe, I don't like to have, and also that density is way too thick. So we need to lower that. I'm gonna put, that's my favorite default for, for thin outlines. I'm not worried about this outline on the bottom because the thicker outline here is going to, uh, one thing I do want to know, though, is where this zigzag outline starts and begins because I want it to meet up with, because uh, it's going to be sewing after the white outline when I arrange everything in my sewing order. So let's uh, select that outline. But you know, it's hard to see, so I am going to make this pink so I can see what I'm doing. One more thing on this zigzag outline. This had a little point to it, and this is showing up flat, so I'm going to do the sharp corner. I was going to make that a point so that it has that little point there. I think that's important a detail to this logo. Now we're going to select the entry exit point. Where is it? Let's select this object and find out where, oh good, it's, it's right there, right where I need it to be, not too far. So uh, what I'll do is meet this line here, and it should sew before, so let's move it in the sewing order, before the white zigzag, because we're going to do that first, and then the zigzag is going to cover up our, uh, while that line is connected, I am going to use the edit. I think I need to be a little closer to see what I'm doing here. And I can see my two scissors, so let's uh, choose this. I'm going to put another point there, and then I'm going to move this scissor right down to here. And you see, it got rid of the uh, one, the jump there. Now, the reason why you have that black one there is because that's where it ends until you go. So that's where we'll start our next section of work. So, so I'm going to send a... Uh, white running stitch right from where that stops. That, and uh, we're going to fill in the white mountain tops first. And then we'll do that section over here and uh, the other section. So I'm going to run this stitch right to where I'm going to begin. Oops, that was a zigzag, so I need to select that and change that to a running stitch. We're going to change all these pinks to white in the end, but I'm just keeping it pink so I can see what I'm doing. So we'll do a uh, region sew here, and we're going to start right where that scissor is. And 
and double click. Now that, the last color we use there, we're going to make that pink too. We don't need a running stitch outline. Whoops, we need to select it first. So we'll make that white and that not sewn. Now once again, we got to figure out where the entry and exit points are. We knew the entry was uh, there because that's where we started. But where that little arrow is going out, grab that arrow because we know it's going out and we're going to put it here so we know to start our next running stitch to get to this next white area. We'll do that by selecting another running stitch and we're going to go from there to this area here, double click. And that's where we're going to end. Oh, by the way, we, we might as well make all these areas white. I mean pink so that we can see them. So we're going to do another region fill. And we're going to start here. And double click. Once again, we need to find out where our, oh, and this has a running stitch around it. We want to turn that off, not sewn. And we want to find the region, the arrow is going out. We're going to grab that arrow and we're going to go so that we can meet up with our next. It's all about pathing. It's all about making your machine run smoothly without having to stop. So, now we're going to get our running stitch once again, which we had just turned off for the outline, so we have to get that to go to our last area fill. Double click. And now we're going to use the region fill again without a line sew. Right where that scissor is. Double click. Okay, so let's take a. Okay, it's starting to shape up. When we turn all these areas white, it'll look better. And we might want to change the direction of some of these fills so that they're not all going in a 45 degree angle. But most importantly, we have it all pathing so that when it sews out, there's not going to be any trim stops or jumps. I'm going to select this and turn these back to white again. So the last part we need to do is this uh, heavier zigzag outline with the black on both sides and then this little, I, I call it a baseball stitch. And uh, we want all that to path as well. I'm going to start with the uh, black details uh, with this, what I call the baseball stitch. And uh, I'm going to start right here with a triple stitch. Actually I want a curved triple stitch. And we're going to do that in black. And I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to double click this because I don't want a triple stitch anymore. I want a just a regular running stitch to connect me To this point. Oh, I did it wrong. I undid all that because that's not where I wanted to start. I'm going to start the triple stitch here. I hope this turns out right. Double click. Go back to a running stitch. Start it right on top of the scissors. Double click. And next I want to do a motif stitch. Now, the motif stitch, you can, uh, once you select it, you go to Sewing Attributes and open up the motif folder, and it gives you all kinds of, uh, of different selections. I created this one here. I call it the baseball stitch, and I want to show you how I did that. 
I went to the, under the option box because I didn't have this stitch. I could go and do it manually, but these are so close together. And as I like to always say is embroidery is an art of distortion. And you just are giving the illusions of, uh, of what you're trying to portray in the, in the image. You can't always get an exact copy because thread is like a millimeter thick, so you can't get some of these very small details. It's not like laser printing. So under this option box here, we're going to go to the Programmable Stitch Creator. And it has, uh, we can do a, uh, uh, a fill stamp stitch, and you see the preview box shows you how it will look at, uh, there. And then you have under here the motif stitch. And I have already created it, and I'm going to show you. I think it was baseball stitch two. No, it's baseball stitch one. Okay, open. All I did was uh, did this is the beginning, and this is the end. Let's start a new one, and I'll show you. How we did this. So we'll go here and we'll have new motif pattern and as you can see this is uh, just one continuous line because it's a motif stitch. And if you go to uh, lesson 26 I go into more detail as to how to uh, create motif stitches. Uh, I have a really good rope motif which I use all the time and the chain motif I made uh, years ago was a little more difficult but I use that chain motif all the time. So there you have it and then you'll go here and you'll save it as but I already kept created so I'm just going to select my baseball stitch motif and say okay. Now when I Double click. And that's going to be enough to give the illusion we want. Now we could, by we got to collect, check the maintain aspect ratio. We can make this a little smaller if you like. I think that looks a little bit better. Okay, so now we're going to go back to a running stitch. Excuse me, I think we'll do triple stitch since we want that to. Oh, not a, I forgot that was that was selected. Okay, now we need to select a running, uh, I mean a triple stitch. Double click and then I'm going to go to a motif again and it should select the last motif that we used. Double click. Now we're going to go to a running stitch again. And we're just going to meet up here. Double click. And then go over it with a triple stitch. And I'm going to double click here now and we have to remember where this ends because that we're going to be doing the black outline next. And the reason we're doing that black outline, I guess I'm going to have to show you a demonstration. I'm doing that because I'm going to use a manual punch to do this outline zigzag uh, because when you use a plain zigzag, uh, you cannot outline it. You see, it's a zigzag, but you don't have the option, it's grayed out, to give it an outline. So, we'll delete that. But if you use the manual punch, double click, and you select it, you have the option to give it an uh, outline. And we want that. However, notice that it closes the edges. So where that might create a problem is where the two ends meet, as in this example. Double click. Okay, that's in white. You can't see it too well. Let's select it 
and add a outline. Let's do it in real. Let's preview. Whoops, wrong one. You see, you don't want to see that. It wasn't in the image. We don't want that there. But we're going to show you how to get around that. So we're going to finish off this design by putting our, our black and white zigzag outline and we're going to do that with a manual punch so we can outline it. We could also do it with a zigzag and hand outline it with a black, but I think this is the fastest and the best way to do it. So we're going to start with our top, bottom, top, bottom, and I'm using the straight manual punch and I'm trying to use as few clicks as possible so that when the uh, stitches curve it'll be a more natural curve as opposed to abruptly changing directions. When we get to where we started, we're going to go a little bit over and double click. And oh, that was in pink, the last one, but we're going to change that to white in a minute. But I want to select it, and we're going to put a outline around it. Let's make that black so you can see it better. And in the realistic preview, you see there's that problem I told you about. Well, the way to get around that is to make sure your black outline so before, and that will cover it up. But there's the other problem. Now you can't see the black outline so well. So we're going to change that from a running stitch to a zigzag stitch. And the last uh, settings we had in Sewing Attributes, uh, hold on, was a zigzag width of about 1.3, 3.7. That's just where I want it. I don't want any under sewing either. So now we can change this uh, color back to white again, because that's the last thing that's going to sew with that white outline. So looking at the whole thing now, uh, I have it pretty much where I want it, but before you ever sew out, you need to do a simulated sew out. This is where you catch all your errors, so get a piece of paper and a pencil and jot down all the things you want to correct. So I'm going to have it start right in the middle, and uh, I can tell you one thing I want to edit right away is I don't want all these machine added underlays. Now you do need an underlay in just about all embroidery projects. However, the way the machine puts it in there, or the way the software puts it in, is in sections. And if you really want to have everything have good registration and meet up correctly, uh, you need to have the whole fabric and stabilizer and everything joined together all in one piece as opposed to little sections of underlay and uh, and I definitely don't need the underlay underneath all these really fine zigzag outline stitches I'm using. Let's speed this up. I want, just want to see mainly where the white's going because that had the most potential. Ah, you see I caught a jump there and we're going to fix that and that's something else I'll write down. Get rid of the underlay and fix that jump, or that trim, I should say, because it's not just jumping, it's stopping and trimming. Okay, and so that I sent out a runner, and then I filled in all of those. Oh, that has underlay too, we don't need that. And then we did our black, and it ended up, okay, I've seen enough. First thing I'm going to do is to fix that uh, that trim there, and we'll do that by using a straight uh, running stitch, and I want that in a color that will contrast so I can see it easily when I'm looking for it. And I'm going to start it from where the scissors began, and then I'm going to end it over there. Now let's see. Let me select this and make these pink so I can see it when I break it up. And I know that I want the um, stitch, I want that stitch to be after this little white that separated the two blues. So let's put that after that before the zigzag starts. Now I'm going to change that to pink. So 
so they'll all group up. And now let's see if we have that problem. Let's move it on over. That's all I want to see is, yeah, there we go. So now that we have everything, we've gotten rid of all of our trims, the next thing I want to do is get rid of the uh, underlays in a lot of these. So uh, I'll s select the object, go to sewing attributes, and remove from the region so the under sewing. And these we're going to have to kind of do individually since they're all broke up. Or we could do it this way. We could select with our finger on the control key, select all of these individual pieces. That way, when we go to, oh, it didn't work this time. Well, I'll do them individually then. I'll get rid of it. Sometimes it'll collect them all. Sometimes it doesn't. And I'm not getting rid of it all, just most of them. And then I definitely want this under sewing on the region. I want that. And I don't want any under sewing under the lines either. So we're going to get rid of that. All right. Now let's see. Okay, we got rid of that. And let's see if that has a no. That does not have under sewing. That's good. And I believe these pieces. Yeah, they all have them. And I'll just keep my finger on the control key as I select them all and get rid of And then, oh yeah, you have to right click, select objects. And then you can remove it from all of them at the same time. All I have to do now is change this back to white. And I think our logo came out pretty good. I still need to do some tweaking, uh, straighten up some lines and everything. But uh, for the most part, oh. I, we got rid of the undersewing. We forgot one of the main things. Since we did get rid of the undersewing, we have to put a manual underlay. So uh, we can, that's going to be the first thing that's going to go before everything. So we need to find out once again where the entry and exit points. Let's right click, select object, and find out where the. Okay, so we know the entry exit is right there so we got to remember that uh, now we're going to uh, just get a straight line and as I'm going to use a color that is kind of bright and different so I can and I'm just going to do a manual under so I want to tack down that material so that everything stays in place when we sew it and then I'm just going to kind of go back and forth and zigzaggy all over the place. Just to hold that stabilizer. I, I would do it, okay, I'm going to double click. And I'm doing it outside so that I'll be able to see exactly where I want to put the, uh, the or where I want to join the points. And as you might remember, it was right there where the blue started. So let's select. That's why I left it out so it's easier to grab. And now I got my scissors and I'm going to lay them right on top of those scissors. And then I'm going to move it to the very, very front. This will be the first thing that sews down and we'll change that color to blue. So one last sew. And we're going to tack it down with a manual underlay. And I could have done a better job at that, but this video is getting kind of long. And uh, that will be enough, really, to, to hold your uh, fabric and stabilizer in place. And also, if you have the correct density and, and it designed this small, you're going to have good coverage as well. But every design is different, and you have to make your uh, adjustments based on how it sews out and what your past experiences have been. Uh, I know this has been a long video. If you all have any video, any uh, images or designs you're having problems with, please send it in to oleans.com and uh, we can use that in another one of our advanced tutorials. Uh, these advanced tutorials, as you can see, get pretty detailed and, and boring, but <laughs> you can learn a lot by watching how others uh, plot out designs. I hope this has been helpful.